spring has come. The warm weather was finally starting to set in, and people seemed happier considering the sun was shining and there were blue skies instead of the usual gray gloom of winter. I have been working for a data storage company called Regent Securities for over 10 years. You know, that type of data, storage that stores company documents for years to comply with regulatory requirements before eventually being destroyed. To say our operation is huge would be an understatement. My location has six different warehouses, each one the size of a football field or more, filled to the brim with all sorts of paperwork. We also have short-term storage for companies that want to store files that they might need quickly but don't need for day-to-day -day business. Oh, yes. How could I forget about the destruction plant? You know, the huge crematorium that first shreds documents, puts them in an oven, and then heats them up to the temperature of the sun to vaporize everything in it? Well, we have that too. Anyway, I'm one of the workers in the warehouse, supervising a team of eight and managing all of the above. Oh, my name is Brett Bonham. Yes, like the famous drummer of Led Zeppelin, but without the relation. I had long hair when I was young, if that means anything. I know, bad joke, but at least I have a sense of humor, right? I am now 39 years old and have been married to Margie for almost 20 years. Yes, you heard correctly, 20 years. I know some people may not understand this, but teen pregnancy happens, and it happened to us. Margie, not Margaret. God, she hates that name, dated a high school quarterback before he left on a scholarship to a prestigious university. Derek Washington was a great football player, big, built to the nines, and a hit with the ladies. He was two years older than me and three years older than Margie. There were rumors that she preferred black guys, which was confirmed by her relationship with Derek. But after their breakup, this was no longer the case. Anyway, he was forgotten and one day at a party she found me. And let's just say, the rest is history. Oh, before I forget, I need to make this clear. She came towards me, and although I didn't stop her, she was the aggressor in this case. And we ended up with two wonderful boys. I never thought I'd be a father at 18, and I certainly know Margie didn't think she'd be a mother of twins at 17, but it happened. Clearly, I never went to college taking a job on the lowest rung of a warehouse to support my young family and working my way up to where I am now. Eight kids later, and here we are. Yes, you heard correctly, eight. We had twins for the first time, Michael and John, who have already graduated from university and have good jobs. Then we had another boy, Stephen, followed by a girl, Grace. Then Annabelle, Toby, Isabel, and our youngest, Adam. My wife made the decision to continue having children. But after Adam, when Margie was 30, she decided enough was enough. She went and got an IUD installed, and we have been living in marital bliss ever since. Well, partly. Of course, family life is turbulent, and I wouldn't change our kids for the world. But when Margie returned to work, when Adam started school, things slowly began to change. As always, it wasn't one specific moment, but over time, they accumulate and turn into many things. Our sex life has changed. Margie is usually quite aggressive in the bedroom, and although she often initiated our marital sex, she sometimes liked to be held and, shall we say, vigorously made love. This gradually changed, and Margie became more gentle and affectionate. Okay, no big deal. But now, in recent months, she has become distant. I would ask if everything was okay and she would just smile and nod and give me a reassuring kiss. But I didn't know. I couldn't understand. But something was wrong. I tried to do the usual things, checked her phone, computer and such, but nothing. I started to wonder if it could be something medical like cancer. But she showed no other signs and her physicals were fine. The kids were definitely our priority. And with her job taking up more and more of her time, well there's always the possibility that it's stressful. I'm cautious, but not worried yet. I was in the back of the warehouse where few people go thinking about all this when a voice woke me from my thoughts. Hey, sweetie, Victoria Smythe said in her usual sassy tone. Victoria is a single mother with two children, a couple of years younger than me. She is beautiful and a couple of inches shorter than my six-foot height. Long blonde hair, a great smile, and a body to die for, 
even after two kids. If I hadn't met her kids, I would have said she never had any. But I saw pictures of her when she was pregnant, and oh my God, how amazing she looked then. Some people are just lucky, I guess. Not that Margie wasn't lucky, but after eight children, things change. Sure, she got makeup, new breasts, a tummy tuck, and she looks damn good, but it's still obvious that she's a mother, hot mother, with her long, light brown, almost honey hair, curvy hips, and now those amazing breasts. Look, to me, Margie is beautiful, and I love her very much. Even if it all started at a party in a not-so-loving way, and not in the natural way that two people build a relationship. We built a wonderful home full of happy memories, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Hi, I said, smiling at Victoria. What are you doing here alone? Have you been thinking about how to get under my skirt? Victoria asked with her signature cheeky smile. Yes, she was flirting that way. And no, no one minded because most guys liked her cheerful attitude. Very. Well, no, I wasn't thinking. I was just checking which pallets were ready to go for destruction, I replied, looking at her. I laughed and shook my head at her flirtatious grin before she laughed too. Don't lie, I know you want me, Victoria said defiantly, moving closer. I want you, so why not? No one would know here, it's so empty. What can you say, just you and me and these old documents? Are you in? I'm sure I am. She laughed again, before then to playfully slap my hand. God, you should see your face. Damn, Vic, you want me to get in trouble? I asked with a sigh. Let me be clear. I'm not some saint. I've made my share of mistakes in life, but cheating on my wife wasn't one of them, and I wasn't about to start. God, no. It's just fun. Besides, although I like you, yes, I like you, Brett. I don't sleep with married men. If you were single, I would welcome you home in a heartbeat, replied Victoria, nods confidently. Uh-huh, sure, I said, shaking my head, but she grabbed my hand and looked at me seriously. One way or another, I would give myself to you without hesitation, without question. You are one of the best people I know, man or woman, and unlike everyone else here who pays attention to me and gets a little too pushy, you too listen to me. Not many people do that. They just see a pair of breasts or a pair of legs in a skirt and assume I'm some kind of bimbo. You're not. You know what I mean? Victoria said, remaining serious with me. Yes, she could indeed be serious, and yes, she had a brain, but her normal demeanor invited a lot of what she was talking about. Thanks, Vic, but you should know that your constant flirting isn't helping, I said, turning off my tablet and putting it next to me now that I was done with my work. I know, but I don't do this to everyone. Just a few, you're one of them. If others here, that's their problem. Anyway, enough about that. That's not what I'm here for. Kyle wants us to check Warehouse 4. Let's see what needs to be disposed of, and then we can have lunch. Victoria said cheerfully. Or you can have lunch with me. You know, one day I'll get back at you for this. I don't know how, but I will. And I think that will be the mother of all answers, I said, which made her laugh. Come on but I'll accept whatever you deem worthy of punishment. Come on, big guy. You won't break me. I can handle it, Victoria said with a cheeky smile as we walked out of the warehouse and headed to our next job, which Kyle wanted. One thing I knew for sure, having Victoria with me at work, the day would be fun and go by quickly. Then I can go home and enjoy my time there. My youngest Adam was a real mischief maker, and I couldn't wait to tease him along with his siblings. Ah family life. Who would have thought how good she could be? A few days after I was thinking about my wife and our relationship, I started having diarrhea. You know the guy. Bad food and your guts are doing somersaults in a way that would make a seasoned sailor blush. These rolling waves bothered me, so I went home. I made a stop at a pharmacy in the city center to buy some medicine to help me get better faster, and on the way out, everything changed. I jumped into my car and turned in my seat to get ready to leave when I saw her. My wife. Yes, Margie. The one and only mother of my children, who was also my sweet wife. Margie returned to work as a receptionist at the local hospital after Adam started school, and over the past few years has worked her way up to office manager. The hospital was on the other side of town, and though she sometimes went out early for lunch, Seeing her here at 3 p.m. with a guy who looked a lot like Derek Washington 
gave me pause. She kissed him on the lips and then looked at him adoringly before they both smiled and walked in different directions. Yes, they did a look back, very briefly, and I then realized that I needed to do something. Well, after I got better. Now that I have left my problem behind, I am back to life. Sure, Margie was all smiles and sunshine while I was sick, but she's the same when the kids are sick. Thank God it wasn't a virus, and no one else got sick. I have thought through a detailed plan on how to obtain evidence to guilt my errant wife when the opportunity presented itself. Well, that's not entirely correct. I was at my local coffee shop buying an iced coffee when I was approached by a nurse who works at Margie's Hospital. Paige Johansson was her name, and we talked many times over the years. She was in her early thirties, had dark brown hair down to her shoulders, and her ass and hips were curvy and appetizing. A woman might be considered plump or curvy to some idiot who doesn't realize how good she looks. Paige has the body of a model, but is just curvy in the back and legs, with small breasts on top. Her medical uniform is always tight. Her heavy figure makes many men drool, not to mention some women, and her warm smile doesn't hurt either. Why she's always alone is a mystery to me considering how sweet she is, but it's really none of my business. As I said, she came up to me and asked if she could sit down and talk for a minute. Of course, I said, offering her a seat across from me. What happened? How's life? Okay? Just the usual. Work all the time, have free time for dates, lose interest in them, and go back to work, Paige said too casually. She looked around to make sure no one was sitting too close before continuing. Brett, you know we're friends, right? Of course. I said, intrigued by this comment. Not that we didn't get along well, but because we didn't spend a lot of time together like friends do, if that makes sense. Well, I'll just say it straight. I was wondering if you know what your wife does? Paige asked, looking at me intently. I set down my iced coffee and leaned forward. Now I paid attention as all the recent memories of my problem came back. In what sense? At work? I answered curiously. Yes, Paige said, taking out her phone and opening it. What she showed me next was my wife and Derek in the warehouse. I won't go into detail other than how quickly my anger escalated. Watching the two of them together and then listening to Paige talk about how they had been dating for a while, I felt numb. I remember saying goodbye to Paige, thanking her for the proof. But that was it. The next thing I know, I'm standing in the warehouse seething with rage that my wife is having fun with her high school sweetheart. I took off my wedding ring and put it in my pocket before doing my best to act normal around the people who nodded at me as I walked by. Sounds childish, I know, but I went to a corner of Warehouse 3 that wouldn't be occupied so I could break some paper or something. I don't know how much time I spent in the back corner, but hitting hard paper sucks. I was furious thinking about how she could do this to us, ruining everything beyond recognition, when that sweet voice filled my ears. Hey, sweetie, I was looking for you, Victoria said in her usual sassy tone. I turned around and I swear she undid another button on her blouse to show off more cleavage. Yes, I asked, still annoyed. Yes, I wanted your big strong hands to touch me, Victoria replied with a slight chuckle. Just take me, big boy. I won't say no. She was definitely flirting, and when she carefully grabbed the edges of her skirt and lifted it an inch to show off more of her legs, I just gave in. I walked over to her and placed my fingers on her chest, pushing her back until her feet rested on a small pallet of documents wrapped in plastic. She looked at me, her expression of surprise only adding to my newfound courage, and then she began to nod, biting her bottom lip. After God knew how long had passed, she grabbed my left hand and looked at it, noticing that the ring was missing with a small smile on her lips. Everything became like a fog. The further I got from Victoria, the more my mood changed and my rage subsided. With every step I took, I realized what I had done and knew what I had gotten myself into. I was no better than Margie and Derek, probably worse, and I did it to a co-worker. Even though I wasn't aware of any frivolity policies that affected me, what I did was still wrong. I returned to my office, 
closed the door and sat down, feeling the weight of my life begin to weigh down on me. I tried to stop myself from shaking, realizing that my career was over, as was my marriage, and I had completely ruined everything by doing what I did. I must have spent some time in my office, completely unproductive, trying to think of ways to salvage something from my life, when there was a light knock on the door before Victoria entered. She closed the door and came towards me with an expression on her face that I couldn't decipher. Damn, Vic, I'm sorry, I started. But she grabbed my head and kissed me passionately. It was an amazing kiss, with her body pressed against mine and her arms around my neck. When she released me, I looked at her in a daze. If you ever want to do this again, I don't care where or when I'm in. You can do it to me anytime. No questions asked, no permission, I promise, Victoria said sexily. It was as if someone had given her a week's worth of coffee because she was full of energy and practically jumping from foot to foot with excitement. Sorry, what? I asked incredulously. Are you serious? Her smile grew wider. God, yes, it was fantastic. It was some kind of retribution, Victoria answered happily, as if dreaming about what had happened before focusing on me again. I just stared at her for a minute, trying to process what was happening before continuing. And you're not going to report this to HR or even the police for what I did? I asked, still in shock. God, no. Why would I do that? I mean, if we do this again, we need to be more careful, but no, I won't file a complaint. No way. Victoria said, touching my face gently. She radiated sexiness, and it had the desired effect. Okay, fine, thanks, I said, finally calming down. She laughed and sat down on the table, crossing her fantastic legs in front of me. Really? I mean, I haven't met anyone who's okay with that. I'm fine. I think you've just lived too much of a sheltered life, Victoria said proudly. Let me expand your horizons as you have done mine now. Are you sure? I asked, at least to double check that we were okay. Absolutely. God, Brett, you have no idea what I want to do to you right now. Victoria replied, biting her lip and sending me a look. A look that said a lot about how open and welcoming she was. Okay, as long as you're sure, I said, taking a deep breath. I was still not myself, but hey, when was the last time I was? Okay, just remember, I'm serious about this. Now, do you want to tell me what it was? Victoria asked good-naturedly. She pointed her finger at my left hand and moved her finger in a circle. I assume you and Margie are done? You could say that, I replied with a sigh. Victoria seemed sincere, and after what we had just done, I think I trusted her. She hooked up with her high school sweetheart. I got the proof right in front of us. I tried to explain with gestures what we had just done in the warehouse, and Victoria nodded in recognition now that I had explained everything. Then her kind face appeared again. I'm so sorry, Brett. You didn't deserve this. Trust me, my ex did the same thing. It leaves a mark, Victoria said warmly. This was news to me, considering that I had always known Victoria as a wonderful person, but apparently her ex-husband was a creep. I've never met him, so I didn't know. Well, I still don't know what to do completely. What we did wasn't planned but I can't deny that it happened, so I'm just as bad, I said, leaning back in my chair, realizing what a mess I got myself into. Yes and no. They did it first, and given that you took off the ring, you knew your marriage was over. Is there a way to save your marriage? Victoria asked sweetly, but with hope for the impossible. No, I don't think so. This has been going on for months. As far as I know, she's planning to leave. I think I'm still processing it all. I replied with a shrug that seemed to lift her already high spirits. I need to get a lawyer and then we'll see. Does this mean we can't have fun? Victoria asked, making that gesture with her hands as she leaned forward and pressed her breasts together. This made me laugh. Amid all this, sex with Victoria was a bright spot at the moment and she offered herself to me even more. Maybe, but if we do, I'll have to buy condoms and, you know, get tested and... Ah, damn, that's probably too complicated, I replied, but she just grinned and shook her head. Sorry, I wasn't thinking. 
I'm sure I don't have anything and damn, I'm pregnant. She laughed and put her hand on my arm, which calmed me down. Relax, my tubes were tied years ago, and it's probably too late to worry about STDs. But we can go to the clinic, it'll take a little time, and then we'll be safe. So it's okay. But I'll say this. I haven't had a lover for a long time. I was tested a while ago, I'm clean, and I have a feeling that you are too, but let's play it safe. I want to continue this. Victoria said with a cheeky smile. I knew it wasn't the most popular or necessarily the right solution, but I think I just found my way to deal with the end of my marriage. Okay, we'll see how it goes, I said, which made her blush. I like the sound of that, Victoria said, beaming with happiness. Me too, I said, which made her laugh. This is going to be so much fun, I can't wait, Victoria said enthusiastically. There are so many places where we can do this, so many things. Now she was just being sneaky, and I think she knew it. Is there anything you won't do? I asked with a half-smile, considering her comments. Her smile turned into a grin, and then Victoria raised her eyebrows. Damn, she looked so sexy doing it. She stood up from my office desk and walked towards the office door, swaying her hips as she walked before turning to me. She opened the door and paused for a moment. The only way to find out? Victoria winked and laughed before leaving my office. All I could think was that she was right. The only way to find out. I don't claim to be a saint because I'm not a saint. Things in the real world take time. I contacted a lawyer, which only took two weeks, and they informed me that if we couldn't agree on an amicable divorce, well, I would be in a tough spot. I make more than Margie and I will have to pay her as well as child support. Nobody wants to hear that. And while I have no problem paying for my kids, I have a hard time paying for her to sleep with someone else. Why don't women pay men to do the same? Okay, don't answer that question. Anyway, back to why I'm not a saint. Victoria and I continue to meet three teams a week for the past three weeks. We tried to be careful and I'm sure we succeeded, but my God, she can take a hit. While I admit it's fun... It's still not the same as the chemistry you experience with a long-term partner. Maybe we're both holding back, but still, the sex is great. But that's all it is. For now. I was sitting in my office, changing the details of my bank account so that my salary was distributed to different banks, when Madeline Giovanni walked into my office and closed the door behind her. Now, I know what you're thinking, but she doesn't look Italian and is quite cute. She works in the payroll department and we would sometimes meet for lunch or just walk around the area and we get along well. She often walks around warehouses to exercise instead of sitting at a desk all day. Madeline, or Maddie as she likes to be called, is about 30 years old, of average height, I'd say 5 foot 7, shoulder length, dark brown hair, she wears glasses, and while she's not ugly, she's rather plain but homely beautiful. The thing that is discussed the most by everyone who works here is her breasts. I'd argue that she has a good body, considering she seems to have an hourglass figure, but her shirts are usually so big to accommodate her breasts that without a belt around the waist, they're almost like a sack on top of her. Maddie usually wears pants or skirts and is great at them. It's just her breasts that come before her, if you know what I mean. Hi, I said, leaning back in my chair. Hey, Brett. Am I intruding? Maddie asked kindly. No, not at all. How can I help? I replied, straightening up as Maddie sat down in the chair on the other side of my desk. Oh, just came by to chat, Maddie said shyly. I saw that she wanted to ask or say something, so I decided to help a little. I mean, we were pretty comfortable with each other after all our conversations and interactions in the past. Really? And what exactly do you want to chat about, if I may ask? I asked, which made her smile and blush slightly. Well, I heard a rumor that you'll be free soon, Maddie answered carefully, but with some nervousness. I was a little taken aback. It's not that I advertise my marital problems, but I didn't hide them either. Oh, well, I'm looking into it. I didn't tell anyone, and, uh, how did you know? I asked curiously. Maddie blushed and looked away for a moment, which gave me my answer. Warehouse 2, right? She nodded and blushed, but this time she looked at me. 
Yes. I heard a noise and, well, I saw you two together. I didn't want to interfere, but you can say that curiosity got the better of me. Later, Victoria and I talked. She told me the essence of what was happening. This is a woman's thing. And here I am here, Maddie replied, still looking at me. But she seemed calmer. I was anything but calm. Was she going to blackmail me? Okay, okay, please explain, I said, wondering where this was going. I also struggled with the idea of someone seeing us having sex. Reckless, I know. But considering no one ever goes there except me lately. Well, what a wild ride. Well, if and when you finally get divorced, I'd like to have the chance to date you, Maddie said, which surprised me to my core. I, I asked, pointing to myself. She smiled and nodded. Yes, you are. I'm sure Victoria has already said something, but if she hasn't, let me tell you. You're a great guy. You know how to make people laugh. You treat everyone the same. Very sweet, Maddie replied, blushing again. I'd be crazy if I didn't try the challenge. I know several single women here who would jump at the opportunity. Why not? I'm flattered, but I thought you were married, or at least seeing someone, I said, trying to make sense of it all. No, not for a long time. Of course, everyone has needs, but they don't mean anything. These experiences are empty. I want something more, Maddie said matter-of-factly. Sometimes you have to take risks. The way she said it made me look at her from a different angle. There was something about her at that moment that I couldn't put my finger on. Okay, again, I'm flattered, but... I started, but stopped as I sighed. I don't know. I shouldn't even be dating Vic. I'm not divorced yet, and I don't know how long this will take. I'm sorry, I just don't know what to do right now. At that moment, Madeline stood up and smiled at me across the table. You know what to do. You just have to do it. I'll wait, Maddie said with a smirk before heading towards my office door. However long it takes. But first, you need to talk to your wife. Figure it out, you know. See you later. See you, I said before she waved and walked away. Stunned is the word I would use. My life has taken so many strange turns in the past month, and it only continues to get stranger. I went out to check on Warehouse 5 when Mike Avery and Melissa Carter stopped me. Both are good people. Mike was in his late 20s and one of the warehouse keepers, while Melissa was a fitness freak who turned 50 this year. You know the ones who have no body fat and their faces look sculpted to give them a certain look. She also wore one of those smart watches that counts every step. Calories, oxygen levels, and heart rate throughout the day. However, she was a good person, and one of the receivers who greeted every delivery we received from companies near and far. I didn't even have time to say, hi, again, before Mikey immediately gave it to me as if it was a normal conversation at work. We heard you're sleeping with Victoria Smythe, Mike said bluntly. Luckily, no one was around, and I just looked at him, understanding what he wanted. Melissa, on the other hand, didn't give anything away. I needed time to collect my thoughts. I started walking further, and they caught up with me. How did you know this? I asked, thinking again that my world was about to collapse. Oh, rumors, you know people talk, Melissa said with a grin. I don't comment on my personal life, so if you both don't mind, let's leave it at that. It'll be great, I said, opening the door to Warehouse 2 to find Victoria standing there, looking through paperwork for some stored documents. Crap. She looked very good in the skirt she wore today. The skirt hugged her butt and reached mid-thigh. Her blouse was tight-fitting, creating a look that exudes sexiness while still remaining corporate, if that was possible. Then Mike had to ruin everything. Hey, Vic, are you two dating? Mike asked bluntly, which made Victoria stop midway. Damn, Victoria said, looking embarrassed. God, Mike, what's wrong with you? I asked, annoyed. Get out of here. No, we're not dating, Victoria replied, giving me a look, before turning and walking deeper into the warehouse. Well done, Mike, Melissa said, before he walked out of the warehouse and left me standing there with Melissa. What Vic said, I added, which caused Melissa to open her mouth and freeze as she contemplated her next move. 
If you're actually dating, and I'm not saying you're dating, but if you're dating and you're single, maybe you and I could have dinner together sometime? Melissa said, sending me a curious look before turning and walking out of the warehouse. Okay. I took a look at her toned ass in those tight pants. I know I shouldn't have, but Melissa was a wonderful woman. Then it dawned on me, damn, what has my life become? I find out my wife is cheating on me. Then I have silly fun with Victoria without thinking twice about it. And now I'm being harassed and propositioned by co-workers. I don't want this anymore. I can't. I need to make some changes and do it soon. First, I need to make sure Victoria is okay, and then I need to talk to my wife. I think it's time for us to sit down and talk, now that I've done everything I can before we get divorced. I hope this can be done without getting ripped off. I took a few days to gather my courage, and now that the kids were busy or asleep, Margie and I could talk privately in our bedroom. The children knew that if the door is closed, we don't want to be disturbed. It's our time. I walked in and closed the door to see my beautiful wife in her usual pajamas, oversized t-shirt and boxer shorts getting ready for the day ahead. Margie, do you have a minute? I asked, seeing my wife getting her work clothes ready for tomorrow in the bedroom. She looked at me and smiled, but soon she saw the expression on my face and it changed. Of course, is everything okay? Margie responded, sitting down on the edge of the bed closer to me. No, not really, I said, looking at her. I could tell she was worried. Okay, what happened? Margie asked patiently. I took a deep breath. Honestly, I didn't want to admit it for a long time, but now it's clear that I can't avoid it. I think you and I have been drifting apart for a while now, I began, and Margie nodded. And I feel like we're moving in different directions. Maybe we're not the same people we were when we got married or something. Sometimes these things happen. Her eyes began to fill with tears, but she quickly wiped them off and nodded. Yes, I think so. You know, don't you? Margie asked, looking at me closely. How long? I chuckled, remembering that moment. The day I came home with food poisoning... I went to the pharmacy to get some miracle pills and was ready to pull out of the parking lot when I saw you two across the street, I said, causing her face to contort as she tried to hold back her tears. It took her a minute to gather her strength. I'm sorry, Margie said sincerely, with that sadness in her voice that people have when they are close to tears. Well, I didn't feel that bad. That moment will always be etched in my memory. It was a terrible day that only got worse. I said, making her cringe. Ah, it still made me cringe. You love him? She nodded, trying to gather her strength. Yes, I love. Okay. Okay. What did I do wrong? I asked, already knowing the answer. I wasn't Derek Washington, right? Yes and no. It's not that simple. I really love you, and I know it sounds crazy, but it is, but... Let me explain a little. Margie said... Seging, and then looked at me. Fine. She nodded and took a deep breath. When I gave birth to Adam, well, not long after the birth, it was like a lightning strike to my brain. No more children seemed to be said. I don't know why I loved having children with you. It was something that I thought I was made for, you know. But then it was like a timer went off and I wasn't supposed to have any more children. From there, there was this underlying feeling that something had to change. Not immediately quickly, but as Adam got older, I started preparing to go back to work and trying to get my life in order, that's all. The next stage, if you will, Margie said with another big sigh. Only I'm not part of this next stage, I said a little bitterly, although I shouldn't have. Margie shook her head and looked at me with pain on her face. It never occurred to me, honestly. It started, as I said, with that moment of clarity that I was done making babies. That's it. We never had any problems conceiving, which never bothered me. I want, just so you understand, I loved every moment with you, every... And then one day it was all over. I didn't know where to go from there, Margie said, almost pleadingly in her voice. Okay, 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 but you didn't come talk to me. I guess that's my fault, too. I always followed you wherever you went. I thought you'd come to me and we'd work it out, but instead this, I began, 
distracted by the image of her and Derek together in the hospital before returning to the present. Why me? I mean, you could have just followed him? She shrugged and shook her head. I don't know. There were a lot of rumors about what a nice guy you were at school. I was intrigued, I guess. And when we ended up together at that party, I felt something I hadn't felt in a long time. Sounds stupid, considering that we were so young. But I felt like we could have a future together. It wasn't supposed to work out this way, but Derek told me to have the kids and move on without him. He didn't want to be burdened with his career path, so we broke up. Well, he and I were young, stupid, and then I guess I was a little lost. I didn't know it at the time, but I was looking for something, and after a few guys, I found you. When I got pregnant with twins, well, Margie stopped at a moment, smiling at the memories. A small smile appeared on her face before she continued. It never scared me. I know my friends were terrified and so were my parents, but I wasn't. You were wonderful and I fell in love with you. Then I decided to give you everything I could and make you the happiest guy in the world. I was, I said honestly. These were some of the happiest moments of my life so far. She looked at me with adoration and nodded. Yes, we both knew. So I discovered that I enjoyed making babies with you and was happy with what we had. But Derek came back into my life about a year ago. He joined the board of directors of the hospital, and I didn't expect anything at first, but we slowly reconnected and old feelings flared up. I didn't realize how much happier I could have been, if that makes sense. It wasn't because of you, it was me. I'm sorry, Margie said with a sigh before some tears rolled down her cheeks. I shouldn't have done anything, but I did. I will regret it forever. I shouldn't have put you in this position. I'm so sorry. Me too, I said, feeling the relief slowly creep through me. What do we do now? Margie asked quietly. Although I heard that she was preparing to leave, I don't think she knew how or why it took so long. Perhaps it's time for me to take control of this situation. I think Adam is less than ten years away from adulthood. I'm not sure if we should try to stick together or break up. When I found out about you and Derek, I lost my head and slept with someone too. I admitted, shaking my head. I said I wouldn't do it and I wouldn't be like you, but I was so angry that it just happened. I can't undo it and it doesn't matter anymore. It's too little. Too late. I guess our marriage is over, isn't it? I asked, looking at her. I'm guessing you'll be with Derek? She was sad and nodded. I'm sorry I made you this way. You're a good person, Brett. A really good person. I'm sorry I ruined everything. But yes, Derek and I want to be together. He's in the process of divorcing his wife, and it'll take some more. A little time. He has a couple of kids, too, Margie said regretfully. I wondered if she realized that he didn't want to have children with her, but then again, what did I care about? My marriage is over. Okay, maybe we should start divorce proceedings, too. I don't want to fight, but I'm also not going to be made a fool and pay all this money that I don't owe. He's rich, isn't he? I asked, to which she nodded. I don't want to fight either. If all goes well, I hope to leave you the house and take only my money and things, Margie said, looking at me with pleading eyes. She knew she hurt me. Okay, but can I ask for one thing? I asked, looking at her. Anything? The tone of her voice told me that Margie wanted to do whatever it took to atone for her betrayal. More kids for both of us. I feel like we have our family and I don't want to change that dynamic. We created something special, even if it was a mistake when we got the twins. I don't want to change that either way. There's no way either of us can have more children, I said, to which she relaxed and nodded. God, no. I'm done with kids. I'll even get sterilized to prove it. If I do that, will you get a vasectomy? Margie asked, hopefully. She took a moment to think before continuing. I agree. Our family is special and I don't want to ruin that. Divorce will be hard enough. The idea is that I get a vasectomy, you get a sterilization, and there won't be any more children. I think we've done enough to repopulate the world, don't we? I asked with a slight grin. I can't help myself. Even though I was sad, I still had a sense of humor in me. Exactly. Thank you, Brett. I know it doesn't mean much but I have so many happy memories with you and the kids. 
and I'd like to continue making them, even if we're not together anymore. I know it will take time, but if possible, I'd like to try, Margie said, taking my hand and squeezing it tightly for a moment. Of course, I can't make any promises, but we can try, okay? I said to which she nodded. Fine. We went to bed that night. Of course, it was different now that everything had been said, but we managed. I probably slept better than I have in a long time, and I think Margie did too. No, we didn't turn it into a nuclear war, and although it was hard to accept what she did, I did the same. At least now I had a clearer path forward and a future to look forward to with someone who would want me for me and not as a fallback option. Things started to look up on the home front. We filed for divorce and started the process in the simplest way possible. I really couldn't argue with my wife considering I was no better and she was leaving the house to me. A month passed and I began to get used to life as a single man, although the divorce was not yet finalized. You know how there are times when you think everything is going for the better, but then things get worse. I only blame myself for thinking that there was some unwritten rule about how it should be, but in reality, everything turned out differently. Doesn't that make sense? Let me be clear. So I was walking through Warehouse 4, heading from the back to the loading docks, when I saw Victoria having sex with Mike Avery. I thought she and I had something unspoken, that it was just between Victoria and me, but when I saw the surprise and fear on her face before it calmed down again, I realized that we had never really talked about it. What have I done? I'll tell you what I did. I walked out onto the loading docks, wondering how stupid I could have been, when I slipped and the sudden, searing pain in my head disappeared and everything around me went dark. The sounds of beeping, bustling, and people talking are what I heard when I came to my senses. My head was pounding and my left arm was hurting, which was weird. My eyes finally adjusted and I realized I was in a hospital. I moved with difficulty, noticing that my forearm was in a cast and I was connected to the usual devices for a hospital patient. I noticed movement to my right and turned to see Madeline Giovanni standing there, looking at me with a worried look. Hi, I said, trying to focus. I fell, right? Yeah, right off the loading dock. Hit my head on the side of the truck and broke my arm in the fall. I saw everything, Maddie said calmly. But I could tell she was worried. Thank God she was walking around on one of her breaks, otherwise who knows who would have found me. Are you okay? I'll call the nurse. Yeah. A little headache, I said as Maddie gave me a half smile and walked towards the nurse's station. I remembered what happened, and it came back to me. Seeing Victoria having sex with Mike shouldn't have upset me, but it did make me feel weird. I don't remember much, but I was heading towards the loading docks and then there was pain on the side of my head. Now I'm here in the hospital. I looked around, adjusting to my throbbing headache, when I realized Maddie was the only one with me in the hospital. Probably the others knew too, but even Victoria was not here. Maddie returned as I had another thought. Which hospital are we in? I asked, hoping it wasn't the hospital where my wife worked. Epworth Private, Maddie replied, confirming my fears. Before I could say anything, my soon-to-be ex-wife appeared, looking worried. God, Brett, when I found out you were here, I came as soon as I could. You were unconscious for quite a while. Margie said with a concerned tone. She looked me up and down and then looked at Maddie. What's happened? I missed a step on the loading dock, hit my head on the back of the truck, thought the ground looked cozy and thought it would be fun to use my hand to break my fall, I replied with a smile. Maddie smiled halfway, and Margie let out a long breath. Since you hit your head, when did it become so fun to try to crack your skull open? Margie asked looking at me the way only a mother can look. Yes, I know she's not my mother, but it seemed like that's how she felt about me now. What can I say? I don't necessarily want her back, but does our past together mean nothing to her? Well, it could have been worse. Maddie was nearby on one of her breaks and saw everything. I'm in good hands, don't worry, I said, trying to smile even though my head hurt. The nurse approached, interrupting our conversation. How do you feel? The nurse asked, looking into my eyes and doing what they usually do. My head hurts, my arm hurts, it's just wonderful. I said with a smile, which made the nurse laugh a little. Good to know. 
it looks like you have a concussion. The skull isn't cracked, but we'll leave you here a little longer, just in case. Stay overnight to make sure nothing goes wrong, okay? The nurse said, to which I tried to nod. Oh, yes, thank you, I said. Okay, then I'll leave you. I'll come pick you up later, the nurse said with a smile and left. Did I look at her ass as it jiggled in the tight medical suit? Yes, I looked. Did she have a nice ass? Again, yes. Look, it's because of the concussion, okay? Well, it's time for me to go back too. We'll talk later. And as soon as we know when you'll be discharged, we'll organize everything at home, Margie said, nodding. We lived in the house from the time we talked to each other and after we told the kids what was going on, but not as husband and wife. They were upset. But after their mother came clean, the kids became more supportive. But they realized we were growing apart and understood why we were acting more like roommates than anything else. Okay, thanks for the visit. See you, I said as Margie turned and walked away. I looked at Maddie, who seemed calmer now. Are you okay? It's better now, Maddie said, smiling sweetly at me. Fine. You sure know how to scare someone? Maddie said, placing her warm hand on my arm. Yes, the touch was nice. Sorry, I didn't plan this. I was a little busy, I said with a sigh. Images of Victoria and Mike flashed through my head again, followed by a photo of Margie. It's okay. It's even nice when someone falls at your feet. Maddie tried to hide her smile in the sweetest way. I started laughing but stopped when I felt like every exhale was giving me a headache. It felt like my head was going to explode every time. I'm glad it's at your feet. Thank you, Maddie. It means a lot to me, I said, taking her hand. I could have stayed there for a long time if it weren't for you. Well, that's already the past. Let's cure you, and then we'll discuss who owes what to whom, Maddie said in a light tone. About? Yeah, I think lunch or even dinner would be nice, thanks, Maddie said, blushing. It was clear that she was out of her comfort zone at this point, but really wanted a chance with me. From our conversation when she came to my office and now this, it was clear that she was truly sincere. I looked at her and smiled, which seemed to calm her down. Dinner and dress nicely, I said, which made her beam. A ball gown or something more casual, you know, above the knee or still below? Maddie asked, her eyes sparkling as she asked the question. I swear she blushed. And for a moment, imagining Maddie in that gorgeous dress made me forget about my headache. Let's leave the ball gown for later. Maybe something above the knees. More casual. It will still be a nice restaurant, but I won't wear a tie, I replied, causing her to bite her lower lip a little. I'll leave it to you to decide if we go to the movies or dance after. Okay, I'll keep your word, Maddie said cheerfully. Now rest. I need to get back to work and take care of a couple of things. I can handle it, I said calmly. Great. I'll come by later, before visiting hours end, and I'll be back tomorrow, Maddie said matter-of-factly. Maddie, you don't have to do this. I'll be fine, I said, but she shook her head and smiled. Everything is fine. I want to, Maddie said, picking up her Percy. BCDs, I need to make sure you're okay for our date. She laughed and came up to me. It's true, I said before she leaned over and kissed me on the cheek. What is this for? She was still leaning over me, and then I realized that her breasts were pressing my hand. In a good way. I'm sorry I didn't mean to, Maddie said, looking worried. But I smiled and moved the finger of my broken hand to bring her closer. Not at all, I said when she was so close to me. Then I did something I probably shouldn't have done, but I leaned forward and kissed her on the lips. She exhaled hot breath, and I realized that she had swallowed. Thank you for taking care of me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Maddie said, staying close. It took her a few moments before she straightened up, pulled herself together, and seemed to calm down. I better go. Bye, Maddie, I said with a smile. She smiled back at me and carefully began to leave the room, then stopped at the door and turned around. See you later, Maddie said before smiling and leaving me alone with my thoughts. 
That's when I realized I was still in the hospital when all the sounds came back. The beeping of cars, the squeaking of shoes on the floor, the muffled voices of other people in the hospital and the coolness of the temperature. Suddenly I was alone for a long time and it didn't feel right. It was as if something was vague or unsaid and needed resolution. It dawned on me that I was missing Maddie, which was strange because we didn't know each other that well. But still, without her presence, I began to feel a little naked. Not wanting to dwell on it, I pushed it aside and tried to think about other things. First of all, what should I do with my home life now? It was now clear that Margie and I could not stay in the same house. Of course, we wanted to be close to the kids, but it was like rubbing salt in a wound, and we needed to separate so that healing could fully occur. Until we separated, this was not entirely possible. With nothing else to do, I was going to make a plan and set goals to move forward with my life. Hope. Surprisingly, I slept well that night, perhaps because I made a rough plan of what I would do with my life. I talked to all my kids last night, which helped fill the void I felt and reminded me of what's important. My children were high on the list, and Margie's transition to moving was second. It would be difficult considering she wanted custody, and there was no news yet about moving in with Derek. But once I decided not to worry about her problem, I fell asleep. Anyway, when I woke up this morning, my mind started trying to sort out other things that have happened lately. Of course, seeing Vicky with Mike wasn't what I expected and it wasn't something we discussed. But at least I thought we had something. But now it seems that this is not the case. Victoria didn't come to see me at all and only Maddie and Melissa came to see me last night. Margie is coming over today to make sure I get home okay, but other than that, I'm alone for now. Maddie said she would come check on me today, which was nice and she sent me a couple of messages in the meantime. This was also nice, but not receiving news from others bothered me a little. In any case, what happened next was unexpected. I was getting dressed and waiting for my discharge papers, knowing it might take several more hours, when Derek walked into my room with that same gait. You know, that smug walk, that was a little too exaggerated. I was sure Margie would come, but I got him instead. Hi! Derek said, looking around the room to apparently make sure the coast was clear. Hi, I replied, wondering what was going on. How can I help? He looked at me and laughed a little before his big white teeth flashed in a smile. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Margie was worried. And well, I want her to be focused, you know, Derek replied with a half grin. Concentrated? I asked, trying to understand what he meant. That is, that is, now she is with me, in its rightful place. I don't want this little incident you had to come between us, Derek said, his smile fading. The arrogance was obvious, but I was going to be clear with him too. Derek, let me make something absolutely clear, I said, standing up to face him. He wasn't much taller than me, still well built, but at that moment I didn't care. I don't need Margie. We have kids, and we're going to try to work as co-parents. If you come between us on this, well, we'll have conversations. Otherwise, she's yours. Do what you want with her. Understood? We agreed, Derek said, his grin appearing again. She'll help you get home, but as soon as you settle in, she'll come to my party, Derek said, obviously trying to piss me off and get a reaction. God, Derek, I don't care. Realistically, I don't care. I'm not one of those low types who attack married women. You could at least wait until we get divorced, but no. I said, trying to be more dramatic and sarcastic. I think it hurt him a little, but I shouldn't have said anything. Guys with big egos like that, you know. You don't understand, right? Derek said with a laugh. She's crazy. The only reason she married you is because I was busy with my career, making millions, and sleeping with any hot woman I liked. If you didn't already know, I'm good friends with Marc Lavalier, and we made a bet on how many women we could win over our careers. Two women won. Well done. I'm really happy for you. Again, I don't care, I said, looking around for a nurse so I could get out of here. It's a shame to lose, isn't it? Derek said as he turned to leave. Have fun with all your kids. What is this supposed to mean? I asked, angry. He simply grinned, then turned and stopped. That means Margie won't be around much soon and she'll forget about you and those little freaks. 
Derek said before Margie came, which made him change his behavior. His demeanor instantly changed. Hey, honey, how are you? I just came to see Brett before I left to make sure he was okay after you told me. Hi, honey, Margie said, kissing him on the lips. Then she looked at me, realizing what brought us here, and her smile faded. Sorry, Brett. No, everything is okay. You belong to him now. Derek and I had a great conversation. I didn't know he hasn't changed at all since high school, I said, causing Derek to lose his confidence and look worried while Margie turned around. What? Margie asked, looking at Derek. Tell me you didn't try to hurt him? Tell me you didn't mention that idiot Mark Lavaliere? Tell me you didn't try to look like a big man? Because God help me, if you do, we're done. I have never seen such a selfish, stubborn person back down so quickly. If backtracking was an Olympic sport, I'm sure Derek would have taken gold. I was only joking, baby, damn, sorry. You know I love to joke. That's all it was, Derek said defensively before she turned to look at me. Sorry, Brett, really. Derek has a big mouth, but not much else. I'll make him shut up, Margie said angrily. Let me take you home, and then I'll deal with Derek. Everything is fine. I'll find my way home. I don't need any more reminders about what you'll be doing all Friday night with his old teammates, I said, brushing her off and adding fuel to the fire. I don't think I've ever seen Margie as angry as she is right now. Derek, how could you? Margie screamed, ready to rush at him, but he slipped out of the room and disappeared. She turned to me and took a moment to calm down. Sorry, I didn't know he was so insecure. Margie, honestly, like I told him, I don't care. What you do in your personal life is your business. You and I are done, Kaput, it's over. Of course, I don't need some jerk trying to act like an alpha male, but like I said, I don't care. I got the best from you. Now, as far as my business is concerned, it is our children. I told him this. Otherwise, I'm not going to interfere between you, I said sharply. Still, it's probably best if you leave and I take a taxi home. No, Brett. I'm here and I'll take you, Margie insisted, but I shook my head. No, thanks. I think it will be better this way. I'm fine. It's not a problem, I said, just as Maddie appeared at the door. I can ask Maddie, actually. Brett, Margie began, but I shook my head again. Everything is fine. Go deal with your lover, I said sarcastically. She sighed long and shook her head. I hoped it wouldn't be like this, Margie said sadly. It is not my fault. You chose this idiot, I said, and I saw her face change. Yes, another cheap shot. Yeah, yeah, okay, I know, but I didn't start. I didn't come here and start talking about how I was going to treat you like an object now that you're mine. I think she understood. Sorry, Margie said, taking a deep breath and pulling herself together. And I forgive. See you later, I said, which made her look at me with those eyes that knew she was hopeful, but also wrong. It's better this way. Go to... Derek. This time I turned away and didn't look at her again. Margie understood and turned to leave. Then she muttered something under her breath and left the room. I watched as Maddie watched Margie leave, and then Maddie blushed. She came up to me and hugged me. God, it felt so good, and the hug lifted my spirits significantly. Hi, Maddie said happily. Are you ready to leave here? Hello. Yes, I'm ready. I'm just waiting for my discharge documents, I answered with a smile. It was good that she was here. Good, good. What was it? Maddie asked, looking back in the direction Margie had gone. I'll tell you later. Let's find a nurse and get out of here, I said, wrapping my arms around her waist before she did the same to me. We left my room, and it felt like a step into my new life. I wasn't sure how it would work out, but it seemed like the right direction. With life returning to normal and me out of the hospital, I returned to work and informed Margie that it was time for us to live separately. She agreed and began to take out her things. The kids were okay with all of this. Of course it was hard for the younger three, but we made it clear that we were still a family, just living separately. 
To tell the truth, it was hard for me, but it was the best decision. Margie and I couldn't live together anymore. It wouldn't be good for the family, and she knew that too. As I sat at my desk, going through emails, I heard a knock on the door. Looking up, I saw Victoria come in a little shyly. I had been avoiding her since my return, and she knew why. Every time I walked past, she wanted to say something, but didn't get the chance. I saw her face fall, and it gave me pleasure for a moment. I wasn't ready to deal with it yet, but now that she came in, I thought it was going to happen, whether I liked it or not. Hello, Victoria said softly after closing the door. She sat up and looked at me nervously. Hi, I said, leaning back in my chair and paying her attention. How can I help? She sighed and shook her head for a moment. So it will be? I made a mistake. I didn't want this to happen, Victoria said, changing her tone at the end. It was clear there was emotion there. No, but I don't know how to approach this. I didn't expect to see someone having sex in front of me, I said, shrugging. I know what we did, but at least I thought we were more discreet. She nodded and took a deep breath. I'm really sorry that you found out this way, Victoria said with a sad smile. I probably got carried away, and Mike is a good guy, and this shouldn't have happened, and we... We never talked about this. I know there weren't any rules or anything, I said, to which she nodded. However, she was cautious but open. We can still have fun if you want, Victoria suggested, trying to be sexy again. Unfortunately for me, the whole incident and the aftermath of hitting my head has made me look at things differently now. I smiled, but shook my head. It'll probably be better this way, I said politely. I'll appreciate what we had, but I think I need to slow down a little. Change course. I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. You gave me something I didn't realize I needed, Victoria said with a contented sigh. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be together. You are a wonderful person, and whoever stays with you next will be very lucky. Thank you, Vic. The same goes for you. He will be in seventh heaven, I'm sure of it, I said which made her laugh loudly. That's for sure, Victoria said happily. Thanks, Brett. Please, Vic, I said, and our conversation ended. She stood up, smiled, and left. I know what some of you will say, but I decided it was better to end on a positive note without blaming her for anything or prolonging this situation. I wasn't completely happy with how everything happened, but it opened my eyes. Things could have gone much worse, but Victoria was open and honest with me and helped me through a difficult time, even if I didn't handle it properly at first. So I'm grateful for that and grateful for her influence in changing my life. At least I have a future and I'm going to see where it leads. First stop, Maddie. We'll see where this leads, if anywhere at all. The trip should at least be fun. The last two years have been a wonderful mixture. I know it sounds stupid, but listen to me. My divorce went through, and given that it was fairly amicable, with my wife running off with her old high school sweetheart, I moved on with my life. I returned to work. Maddie and I started dating. On our first date, we went dancing. Seeing Maddie in a gorgeous green dress that showed off her figure without looking tacky was amazing. I mean, when Maddie adorns herself, she is beautiful. And before I forget, the dress came an inch above her knees, which showed off her lovely, smooth legs wonderfully. I also learned that Maddie is sexually adventurous. It's not something she pays attention to, and if someone asked, she would make sure she wouldn't give any details unless she truly didn't trust them. I would be lying if I said we were the perfect couple. Simply because we are not like that. Sure, we have a sexual relationship and we've expanded our horizons a lot, but I think we're more comfortable with each, other as friends with some serious benefits, than as husband and wife, if you know what I mean. In that sense, we're still together and do quite a few things as a couple, but we don't live together. This is the happy status quo for now, but I am under no illusion that this could change at any moment. However, we are having fun and we have organized Maddie's birthday celebration in a hopefully memorable way. To celebrate Maddie's 33rd birthday, we rented a big boat, okay, yacht, whatever. You know, those big things that can hold 10 to 12 people and go out into the ocean. Yeah, one of those, although we weren't planning on going out that far. 
The idea was to take some of our close friends down the coast and enjoy a weekend on a secluded beach that was only accessible by water. This was originally my idea, which arose from the desire to go somewhere warm and calm. Anyway, I came up with the idea for a boat party one evening while Maddie and I were on the lookout point alone, looking out over the city. Maddie, can we talk for a minute? I asked politely. She turned to me and I knew she knew. I wonder if John warned her, considering we weren't always together. Of course, Maddie replied calmly. It's about us, isn't it? And about John and Kara? I nodded. Yes, I said, holding out my hand. As she had done since the beginning of our relationship, she easily took my hand and we walked along the beach together. I think we need to clear things up. I think so too, Maddie agreed. Okay, see? I know it's your birthday, and I want you to enjoy this trip. I started, but she stopped, turned to me, and put a finger on my lips, muffling my words. I'm enjoying myself, don't worry, I understand. We both know it was inevitable, Maddie said warmly. Yes, she was still a wonderful person. Me too, I said, nodding. Then let's not consider this a breakup, but rather an evolution, Maddie suggested with a half smile. You've done so much for me, you have no idea. Yes, perhaps, if the circumstances were different, but they are not, I said. But she again put her fingers to my lips. I'm sorry, Brett. I tree sure every moment I have with you. But John, he seems like the missing piece of me. Do you understand? Maddie said kindly. I got the message. There was no point in beating around the bush when we both knew our time together was over. It's okay. There's no need to apologize. We both got what we needed from this experience. I'm sorry if I ever made you think otherwise, I said, making her smile and shake her head. No, you never did that. You gave me a gift, the confidence to be myself, and I will always love you for that, Maddie said, hugging me and kissing me. You gave me a lot, too. Help me get back on my feet and move forward after my divorce, I said, to which she nodded. Can we still be friends? Can we enjoy our time together even if we're not together anymore? Maddie asked, hopefully. Of course. Let's make this holiday unforgettable, I replied, lighting up her face with a smile. With this, our little conversation about breaking up turned into a wonderful party. The alcohol was flowing, the music was loud, and we were all having a great time. Kara smiled at me as we walked past the others and climbed up the side of the yacht, sorry boat, to the bow. You know, I've never made love on the water, under the stars, Kara said before I pulled her in for a passionate kiss. Me too, I replied, causing her to let out a sexy purr. Well, my love, Kara said, kissing me again. It's time to make my dream come true. Mine too, I said, before lowering myself and helping Kara lie on top of me as I leaned back on the bow. It's so good to feel you in my arms. I know. It feels right, doesn't it? Kara said, kissing me while her body lay on top of mine. Does this mean we're officially together? I asked, letting my hands slide over her beautiful body. Yes, please. I'd like that, Kara replied before moving down on me. Love me, please. I looked into her eyes and realized that this was my future. She was my future. I think she realized it too. Her smile spoke volumes. I realized then that I had never felt so loved or loved as much as I did now. This woman was incredible and I was not going to let her go. It was the start of our wonderful relationship, and I couldn't be happier. I have to admit that the blow to the head was a turning point that I did not expect. Margie and I co-parented our children and tried to make the transition as smooth as possible. Not always, but we brought peace and happiness back to the family. We both went through the sterilization procedure, so our family is now complete. Ultimately, Margie forgave Derek and the two lovers got married. He no longer said nasty things to me and was quite pleasant when we saw each other, usually at children's birthdays, holidays, and during visits. Margie made it easy, which was nice, and, well, things are going well on that side. She will always be the mother of my children, so why not try to make it work for the family? And no, 
Derek's footballer friend Mark was completely cut out of their life by Margie. The stories of his exploits confirmed her decision to keep this libertine away from all married women and from herself. Looks like Mark won't be able to add another check mark to his list. Or he will not give in to Margie, who would like to give him what he deserves. As for Victoria, let's just say that I haven't seen Victoria much since our little conversation, and she seemed to quickly move on to other relationships after our brief fling. I'm not sure if she felt guilty or perhaps was looking for something I couldn't offer. In any case, we were no longer together. And it is interesting that Victoria no longer works for the company. It all happened one day, after an emergency evacuation at one of the warehouses due to a report of a fire on paper. Victoria and Mike were caught in a rather compromising position, if you know what I mean. She decided to find work elsewhere rather than face the indignity of being fired for her behavior. A few photos still occasionally appear on the staff notice board, but no one has been caught posting them. It's sad, but... Someone definitely has an account with her. But I don't focus on that, so it doesn't matter to me. So here's my life. Not everything has to end in the ground burned or blown to smithereens. We may make changes. Things can be difficult and people can get hurt. But sometimes we can get through it and move forward with people around us who can help lift the heavy load. I'm certainly not perfect, but sometimes we ordinary people can deal with problems. I have moved forward after my marriage and found happiness with someone who truly understands me and wants to be with me, not as a second choice. My kids still want to see me and I still want to see them. My family has expanded, even if my ex-wife didn't do what she should have done. What else to say? It's an amazing feeling to be with someone who doesn't judge and with whom I have a deep connection. It's good to be loved, isn't it? Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.